In 2014, a group of Penn State Extension educators received a Beginning Farmer and Rancher Development Program grant from the USDA. This grant focused on beginning farmers in years 2 through 10 who were establishing their businesses. Along with creating study circles across Pennsylvania, a new commercial fruit grower school, and educational materials, much of the work on this grant went into establishing on-farm demonstrations called Models for the Future. These model plots provided living classrooms where new farmers could experience and learn innovative management practices. Three different types of model plots were formed, tree fruit, berries, and vegetables, to illustrate best management practices. Each type of model plot received one-third of an acre. Plot management strategies and design were determined by the collaborative decisions of the farmer, members of the project team, and participatory beginning farmers. One of the farms that hosted a tree fruit model plot was Shoal Orchards, 45 acres of steep Lehigh County shell founded in 1948. Each tree fruit model plot had two rows of crimson crisp and two rows of gold rush apples. The trees were spaced at three and a half feet by 13 feet, which equals 957 trees per acre. To prepare the plot for planting in spring of 2017, cover crops, such as Sudan grass and rapeseed, were rotated for two years to increase organic matter in the soil and combat any nematode issues. My name is Jake Scholl and I'm the manager here at Scholl Orchards. We're in the Lehigh Valley, which is a growing area. And uh, our operation has expanded from about three, four acres up to about 50. With the model plot, I would say most, most things that uh, were suggested worked. Uh, everything pretty much went to plan as long as the timing was done when it was supposed to be done, which is key, it works. The trees look good, they're healthy, they're happy, the, the grass grew, everything just went smooth. The, the cover crops, as far as reducing the nematode population, worked real well. We have tests to prove that. The biomass from all of the Sudan grass, and that stuff was 10 feet tall twice in one year. So it was a lot to put into the ground and uh, it definitely seemed to, to help. I would say what didn't work would have just been incorporating was the hardest part with the texture of our ground is shale, rock, and getting the cover crop actually buried was a challenge. But, uh, that was probably the hardest part and, and getting these posts in for the trellis was difficult too. The one cover crop, the, uh, the canola, the rapeseed, went to seed because we were not able to get it incorporated in time. It came at a tough time of year. Most farmers, uh, August, September, are, you know, working on their crops and this gets put to the side. So some of that went to seed and we had some volunteer weeds, but uh, they, they seem to be uh, controlled since then. This is the first time that we've used cover crops. Uh, before, we never really had the land available to get into it. We didn't think it was important at the time, but uh, we've gotten into it. And since we've been putting cover crops on other acreage, uh, for other crops, produce, orchard, whatever, it uh, just helps the ground. In a plot like this, you're looking for a, uh, a long-term long commitment, 20 years or so. Planning ahead is probably your best way to make this work properly. Uh, give yourself at least three years, two to three years, get your rootstocks uh, on order, on the list, two, three years out. The hardest part about getting trees right now is fact that they're in high demand and growers are planting huge amounts per acre and uh, you know just 10 years ago 15 years ago people were planting you know maybe three four five hundred trees per acre and now it's you know 12 14 1600 and it's just the nurseries I believe are you know struggling to keep up with the demand 
the, uh, the root stocks are getting harder to come by. A possibility may be to graft and bud your own trees and if you can get the root stocks, um, you could maybe control what, what you're going to get by uh, making it yourself. And that's uh, an avenue that we're dabbling with now is growing our own trees. We'll only ever plant apples on trellis from now on. Uh, it's a labor savings. It's easy to pick. It's fun to pick. And, uh, you know, children, older people, anybody can do it. It's much less labor. Uh, you also get a lot of good color on the fruit. There's no inside of the tree. Every apple hangs on the outside. And better fruit, uh, it, it turned out real well. It's, it's definitely what we're go moving into. As far as barriers to implementing this system, A number one, cost, upfront cost. Um, it's, a lot to, it's a lot to handle all at once. It's a lot of uh, labor, materials are big. Uh, we build a fairly heavy trellis here because we're on top of a windy hill and uh, we don't want to be doing this twice, that is for sure. So it's a, it's a heavy trellis, and there's also a lot of tree training. Uh, the first year, you're, you're connecting the tree to the trellis wires as it grows. You're scoring and notching to get limbs to grow where there's blind wood. And you're pinching buds off to get a central leader. So it's a lot of labor the first three years. We're in it for the long haul, and any fruit grower is. So uh, doing it right the first time is the way to go. For more information about the project, visit the Start Farming website.